Hello dear children. Today we are going to learn about clothes. Now how is cloth made? Cloth is made from fine fibers. You cannot see the fibers through the naked eyes. If you take a magnifying glass and watch a piece of cloth, you can see the arrangement which you can see in the picture. The threads are arranged in standing and sleeping order. This arrangement of the threads is called intertwining of threads. So fiber you can see through magnifying glass. Okay. You will see that cloth or fabric is made by intertwining threads together. Intertwining threads together is called weaving. The process of intertwining thread is called weaving. Long threads are woven together to make clothes. So children, we are going to learn in this lesson the process of making clothes and many different uh, information regarding how we make clothes. These are some of the natural materials which is used to make clothes. The fibers of these materials are used to make clothes. Now commonly which we already know is wool which we get from sheep, silk which we get from silkworm, then horse hair is used to make clothes, then cotton is used to make clothes, Fiber from banana is used to make clothes. So these are the com flax which is used to make clothes. These are the common materials which we already know about it. So flax, wool, banana, silk, horse hair, cotton. The fibers from these materials are used to make clothes. The fibers which we use to make clothes are of two types, natural and artificial. Natural is things we get from nature and artificial is material which is made by man. How is yarn made? Yarn is the fine fiber made from materials like cotton, wool, silk, etc. These fine threads are processed and made from the materials and then bundled up the fine threads or the fine fibers which we get is then woven into cloth. Now there are two ways to weave the cloth. One is using the needles and weaving with the help of your hands. So you can weave sweaters, caps with the help of knitting needles. The second one is using the hand looms and the power looms to weave the cloth on a large scale. Now children you, you can see the picture of a hand loom and a power loom. Hand loom is worked with the help of your hand and power loom is working with the help of machine and electricity. The threads 
are arranged on the loom you can see the picture the threads are arranged on the loom and the lady is busy arranging the threads close to each other intertwining the thread close to each other and this process is done by hand so that is why it is called a hand loom and in the power loom you can see machines are used to do the same work and these machines run on electricity here you can see a charkha now during the time of independence when gandhi ji was fighting for the freedom of our country he had put forward to the people that use the goods or use the things which are made in our country that is swadeshi it was called swadeshi goods goods made in our country so at that time gandhi ji used a charkha to make thread from the cotton he did this with his own hands and made the threads ready and this thread made by gandhi ji was given to the loom and they wove a cloth for gandhi ji and gandhi ji used to wear the same cloth that was the dhoti and the shawl now during this covid situation also our respected prime minister mr narendra modi has also asked us to become independent atmanirbhar bano be independent self independent so you have to work independently children and don't depend on others for your work to be done processing of raw cotton to cloth now children here you can see the different stages through which cotton goes through and then it turns into cloth so first you can see the cotton is grown in the fields from here the cotton is picked up and then sent to the factory where the cleaning of the cotton is done there are seeds in the cotton the seeds are removed dirts are removed grasses settled on them are removed so all unnecessary things are removed from the cotton and it is made clean to go to the next step so in the next step you can see the cotton is bundled up into fat threads these are very fat threads made of cotton which are bundled up now from these bundles the cotton is again made into fine fibers here you can see it is fine threads these fine threads are called yarn so from this yarn it is the yarn is arranged on the loom this is a power loom where the yarn is arranged and then the weaving process starts so the threads are arranged in sleeping and st standing order that is called intertwining of threads so here the threads are arranged and the weaving process starts once the weaving is over your cloth is ready now this cloth is ready it is then bundled up and it is going to the market when it reaches the market you go and buy the cloth from the shop after you buy the cloth from the shop you take the cloth to the tailor and the tailor stitches your dress whatever you want
Why should we wash clothes? Clothes become dirty after use. It collects dirt, germs and is full of sweat. We cannot reuse such dirty clothes as we may fall sick. So we should wash clothes regularly. So children we are using the clothes when we are working. So dirt and germs everything collects on the clothes. We have to wash them and then use them. And wearing clean clothes is a good habit. We must always have clean clothes in order to remain healthy and look neat and tidy. Now how are you going to take care of your clothes? Wash dirty clothes regularly. Iron the clothes and keep them in the proper place. Materials used to wash clothes. Now children, you use soap, liquid detergent, soda and washing powder. Then you use uh, uh, different type of soaps. There are many brands available in the market. So these things are used to wash clothes. Now these are man-made materials. These are man-made materials. Rita is also a type of soap which is a natural soap. So this Rita is put in warm water and then the water turns soapy. Then you can wash your clothes in that soapy water. Limestone is a natural material and hingenbet is also a fruit which is giving us soapy water. When it is dipped in water it gives it makes the water soapy. So Rita, limestone and hingenbet they are natural materials which are used to wash our clothes and these detergents and soap and liquid soap and powder then washing soda all these are man-made things so these materials are used to wash clothes washing soda is also a natural material so these are all things which are used to wash clothes Rita is also called soap nut. So these materials are used to wash our clothes. The use of old clothes. Now children, as you grow taller and bigger, your clothes become smaller to you. So you either throw them away. But next time, before you throw, you think two times. You can just give those old clothes to somebody who is in need. Or you can go to an ashram or you can go to an orphanage. Orphanage is the place where children who don't have parents, no mother, no father, and they are kept over there in the orphanage. They are taken care by the members, uh, committee members over there by some organization. So you can go and give your old clothes, donate your old clothes to such organizations and to such needy children. Clothes are durable therefore even if they become very old not very old, they become a little older, they can still be used. If old clothes are still in good condition, they can be given away to those who need them. Torn clothes are made into useful articles like quilts or dishcloth or doormats etc. Now what is qu qu quilts? It is the uh, uh, gadi, your gadda or your uh, godadi. It is called quilts. Then it can be made into dishcloths or doormats. 
Old clothes can be used to make new cloth also. Then thread, threadbare clothes can be pulped and used to make paper. This pulp is used to make paper plates, flowers, etc. It can also be used to make models. Now children, when you go to the YouTube and there are many videos which is showing you do it yourself. So when you give the title as reuse of the old clothes, you will get a variety of videos which shows you how to reuse your old clothes and you can make very beautiful things out of it and you can reuse it okay so just try and see diversity in clothing now here children you can see the pattern of clothes people are wearing people belonging to different parts of India wear different type of clothes they have their traditional dresses these are all the traditional dresses of people belonging to different areas and different states so you can see them the pattern of the their dressing is totally different the pattern of their dressing is totally different so So we can see the diversity in clothing also. There is diversity in clothing in Maharashtra. Due to cultural and geographical differences, considering the climate, people in Maharashtra mainly wear cotton clothes. So in Maharashtra itself, in the state of Maharashtra you can see a variety of dressing pattern different dressing pattern of people in Maharashtra so you can think of all over India what is the dressing pattern this is only people of Maharashtra wearing these type of dresses so these are the tribal people these are the interior Maharashtrian people this is also tribe this is the kashti dhotar and uh, um, shawl on the shoulder topi and uh, the lady is wearing kashti then this is the shepherd the shepherd has this pattern of dressing a turban on his head then a very thick uh, shawl on his body and shirt and dhoti then this is also the tribals or the Banjaras you can say and this is the Kolis in Maharashtra so the variety of dressing pattern you can see that is why we say diversity in clothing clothes worn in different seasons children we have different seasons summer, winter, autumn, spring so we have variety of dress materials for the different seasons summer is very hot so we wear light cotton clothes then you have your autumn you have you have uh, winter winter is very cold so you have woolen clothes spring also we wear cotton clothes clothes worn in different occasions that is you have different type of clothings when you go uh, to party or you go to school so you don't wear the same type of dresses everywhere so let us see you can see your formals and your party dress there is a vast difference between the formals and the party dress formals you wear when you are having some important official work and parties you wear good dresses and enjoy a party you wear uniforms when you are at school 
and there are different uniforms like a driver a conductor a pilot or a fire uh, fireman all are having different uniforms so when you are at your duty you have to wear your uniforms and go casuals are dresses which you just wear it any time at home with your friends so you can relax in those dresses you feel relaxed with your casual dresses cloth is made from yarn yarn may be made from cotton wool etc clothes become dirty on being used we must always wear clean clothes soaps or natural substances like rita rita is also known as soap nut can be used for washing clothes old clothes should not be thrown away they can be reused we see diversity in clothing because of cultural and geographical differences there is difference in the type of clothing worn in early times and those worn today so children we can see a different pattern of clothing like in the olden days people people used to be very comfortable with the clothings we have seen already in maharashtra different type of clothings and people of india also we saw different type of clothings so they were comfortable with that type of dresses but nowadays in this modern days the dressing code has totally changed so we should wear the clothes which we feel comfortable in okay children so enjoy learning so i think you have learned many things about clothes Thank you children